Today we are continuing decluttering the years of hoarding in the kitchen area of my home and today we are going to be focusing on what I am calling the mystery cabinets because I don't even know what's in half of these remaining cabinets. And I'm super excited. Today's video is sponsored by Cricut which I will talk about later on during the organization portion of this video. But back to decluttering, this kitchen declutter has been the biggest task in my whole decluttering series thus far because I realized in the 10 plus years I have lived being an adult I had not decluttered this area once. And I found that I still had all my kitchen items from my college days, early 20s, items that I had just not used in years, so those had to go. Today we are conquering the last of the cabinets and drawers that need decluttering for me to have the perfect practical kitchen of my dreams. We have to take care of the butler's pantry, which I really hate that name. First off, no butler in this house. You could, I guess, call me the butler of this family. So we're just going to rename it Mai's Mystery Pantry because aside from the drink cabinet in this area, I really have no clue what is shoved into the rest of these cabinets and drawers. We also have to declutter all the super high up cabinets in my kitchen, which again, no idea what is lurking behind those cabinet doors. And then last, we're going to declutter and organize the under sink area. And after all of this decluttering, I'm going to be organizing everything, implementing and installing different organization hacks to maximize the efficiency of this area and I will share those with you as well. I am going to work in two subcategories today. First, my mystery pantry and then all the remaining cabinets in the main kitchen area. So as always, first things first, let's pull everything out of the cabinets in my mystery pantry and as I am doing that, I'm going to shamelessly plug my Instagram. If you're not following me over there yet, I get it. No one wants to just like stare at pictures of me, but I don't just post pictures of me. I post a lot of Instagram reels, so if you want to see those and chat with me in the comments and go follow me over on Instagram. Cleaning out the cabinets and drawers before I start the decluttering process, I used to do it after decluttering, but I have found as I'm decluttering, I'll put things back in the vicinity of where it belongs sometimes, so I like fully cleaning the area before I get to that stage when it is completely bare, it makes everything easier and ensures I clean every square inch before items start getting put back. So here is everything from Mai's Mystery Pantry. <laughs> This entire table and some of the chairs are chock full of items to go through. And I, I didn't take off everything here because if you watched my last video, I had a pile of crap that was just already in this area and I took care of it in that video. Now we are to the famous Sparks Joy portion of the KonMari method. And this is where we usually veer into the KonMai method because Sparks Joy just really isn't a thing for me. I mean, aside from my family food, Netflix ice cream, is there anything else that really sparks joy? I don't know, I can't think of it. So Sparks Joy doesn't work for me. I am basing this specific declutter on, can I see myself using this item in the foreseeable future? And I know that normally, that is a terrible way to go about a declutter, especially when it's items that you potentially haven't used in a year plus. But being that this was my mystery pantry, a lot of these items I truly didn't even know that I owned. Which again, I know, problematic. This is why I'm doing this declutter because I realize I have a problem. But now after doing this, I will know that I have these items. Fortunately, I am being much more organized in my life. I will know where items are and hopefully, as I am assessing each item, I will have a pretty good idea if I will use it in the foreseeable future, in which case I can properly decide whether or not to keep it. I hope that logic made sense, but either way, that is how I am basing whether to keep or donate items here. And with all of these adult beverages that you see behind me, honestly, my husband and I really don't drink that much. I know you're probably not believing me because of everything that I have piled up behind me, but maybe the fact that I have so much piled up behind me is all the proof you need because clearly we're just not drinking through it fast enough. Fortunately, none of it really
definitely has an expiration date. It shouldn't go bad. We'll eventually work our way through it. But I can also tell you, I'm going to be starting a special bid for the bottles that I'm going to just give as gifts to friends and family. Everyone's about to be real cherry in our inner circle. Here are the bins I have to organize. I have a couple keep bins, one bin where I'm gonna put items that belong in other areas of the house. So after I'm done, I can easily just go all over and put it where it belongs. And then of course, the good old trash bag for any trash that's just hanging out with all this stuff. So this table is quite full and there's a lot of breakable items on here. So I think I'm actually going to start decluttering these adult beverages first, put the ones we wanna keep up in the pantry as I go to just clear up some table space and then hopefully things won't fall off and break. I'm gonna try to pull out like nice bottles that I'm going to put in our future gift pile. Just set it to the side here. All right, so right away I have nine bottles that I'm setting to the side as future gifts to friends and family. Then I'll have to think a little bit harder about some of these other items, but I can say these are for sure keep items, 1000% keep items. One of these I gifted to my husband probably a year ago and he slowly worked his way through it. And then another one of these someone else gifted to us and like, this is rich people tequila. <laughs> like there's not a lot of things in my house that I could say are rich people things, but I feel like this is this is rich people stuff. So we're keeping this. We, it's not something we're just buying all the time and drinking through. My husband drinks this on special occasions, but it's definitely something that is being sipped and savored slowly, but we're for sure keeping it. Some of this stuff is really freaking weird. This literally expired in 2012. It makes sense that it expired nine years ago because there's no way we would ever drink this, but I don't know why we've held on to it. It is Lester's Fixin' Peanut Butter and Jelly Soda. The light is like f***ing with this. This one, when did this expire? Because this is another one that we would never drink. Bloody Nose Soda. My husband sometimes buys just like the weirdest things. So both of these are going trash. <laughs> or I guess I can empty them and, and recycle because they're glass bottles. I have a feeling that any non-alcoholic beverage here is probably expired. My husband also has all of these like Canada, Canada Dry Club Soda and Ginger Ale, so I know these are all keeps. Banana alcohol. Even though I know the alcohol doesn't go bad, like this is something I know we're not going to drink. We got glow stick party stuff. My husband hosts dance parties in our house. I think I might have mentioned this in the last declutter video, but we have a strobe light. He has these light up glasses. We have little glow sticks, little glowing snap bands. So I need to put this in our upstairs theater room. So again, goes into other parts of the house basket. I feel like in this declutter, I'm going to have a lot of stuff going into the other parts of the house basket. So I might need to divvy up that basket eventually so that I can actually work through it easily. But because this was a mystery pantry where we kind of just threw a bunch of random stuff, a lot of it, if we're keeping it and using it, it's going to find a home in the part of the house where we're actually going to use it. No clue what these are, um, but they're cord slash wire things. So I'm going to keep them because I'm sure my husband needs them for something. Lifetime supply of earplugs. My husband works in construction. So you know what? I'm, I'm getting a bin dedicated to my husband's stuff for him to figure out where its new home is. He'll declutter it on his own time. He's out working right now. So yeah, there's so much stuff I've already come across where I'm just like, I don't know what this is, but it's my husband. So he gets his own basket. Let me go get that. I have a bunch of stuff that probably, you know, not probably, it does fall into the sentimental category, but it's just old 
um, canvas prints of my husband and I. This is our wedding and our wedding party. So once upon a time when it was just me and my husband and we had canvas prints all over the house, these were the canvas prints we've had. But since we've, you know, had three children, taken family photos with them, those photos have replaced these photos on our wall. But these are, oh my God, these are nice memories. So I, I don't want to get rid of them quite yet, even though we don't really have anywhere in our home to display them so yeah I don't know if you're married with kids what did you do with all the old photos you had pre kids if they've been replaced by photos of you and your kids now what did what did you end up doing comment below give me ideas so that I can eventually figure out when I get to the sentimental portion what to do with all these photos my mom gave me my little baby book that's me, 100 days old. I'm half Japanese, it's like a Japanese thing to take 100 day old photos. So this was my 100 day old photo shoot. Once upon a time, I was really into making photo books. These books I know for sure I'm going to keep because there's so many memories jam packed into these books. Maybe I just need to figure out a place for them to go so that we actually see them more often rather than shoved in my mystery pantry. We have a whole bunch of washable paint here. I have a craft drawer that I decided at one point after experiences, I didn't want to keep my paint in the accessible craft drawer for my kids. So I ended up putting all of the paints and really messy items in one of these upper cabinets over here, which I want them to continue to live. I just want a more organized way to keep all of these together. why my husband buys all this hippie stuff. I mean, I guess he's like kind of a hippie, but not really at all. He's like the least hippie hippie you've ever met. I don't know how else to explain my husband. First off, someone wrote in the comments last time I posted a con my video. They said that I speak negatively about my husband a lot and I can't say she's completely lying, but I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of my husband and my love language. We give each other shit all the time. We're best friends with each other. He's awesome. But back to what I was saying of him being like the most non-hippie hippie there is. He is in construction. He drives an F-250. He drinks whiskey. He likes video games. But then on the other hand, he's a very gentle soul and he practices yoga almost every single day and likes to meditate, enrolled our boys in ballet because he was enrolled in ballet when he was a young boy and really enjoyed it. So yeah, I don't know if that was the best explanation of my husband, but my husband's awesome. I love him. We give each other shit all the time, but that's, that's just kind of one of the ways we show love to each other because we think it's funny and we like to laugh. I wish my husband was willing to get on camera so you could actually meet him for yourself and he could vouch for me, but he is a very private person when it comes to being online. He's a very extroverted person, but online he doesn't do social media, like he doesn't want to be on camera. But anyways, I feel like I'm rambling. Back to the declutter. For my little DIY corner, I have my decorative chalk paint. This is a really old Valentine's Day vase, but I'm, I'm gonna repurpose this. Paint it with a new color and DIY it into something usable. Cause, Cause this isn't really a color scheme flowing throughout my house. That was a lot of batteries that just fell, which is why I got this. So actually one of y'all in my comments in my last decluttering video, told me specifically to get these Sterilite shoe boxes from either Target, Home Depot, Lowe's. They were only about $1.50, $1.60. But what's really great about these is they are the perfect size to just hold lots of random miscellaneous items. I plan on labeling all of these nicely with my new Cricut machine. This is going to be my battery box because we have a lot of batteries that were just floating around in a drawer and a whole bunch that just fell over here. I mean, basically anytime I have a lot of items in a specific category, they're just gonna go in these shoe boxes. I 
1000% keeping these because this is a fun thing to introduce my children to. Does this not bring back memories? I pulled out this purple one right away because I can remember basically just huffing this one as an eight year old. Temporary tattoos. Once upon a time, my husband and I were pondering if we wanted to get tattoos. And so we, we wanted to test some out to see if we liked it, if it was a look we, were, we wanted to go for. And I guess long story short, both of us still have zero tattoos. <laughs> Okay, so I have this labeled vaporizer, but I think the proper name for it is a nebulizer. My twins who are chronically, I feel like they've been sick so many times in their short little lives, but both of them at one point or another have had pneumonia and that we would use it as a breathing treatment several times a day when they had pneumonia to just help them breathe. So if they get pneumonia ever again, which I mean, knock on wood, we're gonna hold on to this and I'll just put it in our medicine cabinet. everything that was in my mystery pantry. Now let me show you where we're at, because there is a lot. We have my husband's basket that he needs to go through, just like tons of wires and stuff that I don't know if they connect to things he owns, but he'll go through that. Then I have items that go into other parts of the house, and then also items that I am going to put into my crafting area, craft room. This basket, tall basket that is filled to the brim are items that are either being donated, trashed, or recycled. I'm gonna go through that separately on my own. These are all the items that we are keeping and I need to reorganize back in the pantry over here. All those items there as well is everything that we're keeping that need to be reorganized. And then this is our just gifting area. Items that we're not gonna keep, but I can already think of people in my life that would appreciate it. all the keep items just in the same bin all together because when it gets to putting everything away it's nice just having everything in one spot so that you can just put everything exactly where you want it to go and this cabinet is kind of the crafts cabinet so I'm gonna have just like markers and crayons on the bottom here and I'm also gonna keep all of the paint up here Then I have just a whole bunch of different wires that is going into the same bin it was in before, but there's just a lot less clutter. Then the last of the items we have in here are the memorabilia items that I'm just going to put into the lower cabinets. There's a shelf in the back where I'm just going to be putting all of the memorabilia slash sentimental items before I decide kind of what I want to do with them. And then since I couldn't fit this into the arts and crafts little extra area, I'm keeping these down here because I am determined to use this this summer to create some cute clothes for myself and my boys. This area has been decluttered and put back together and it looks so much better. We got all the drinks that I believe we will actually drink. The rest we will gift. We got all of our batteries in the battery container, arts and crafts here. And you know what, I actually, I have some more arts and crafts in a different area way over there. And I'm gonna put them in here, but for now I'm just, I wanna focus on decluttering. I, I got plenty of things I can fill these drawers with because we got, look at all this drawer space. Future gifts, I feel like every mom has a specific location in her house where she keeps last minute gifts and that is what this cabinet is going to be for me. Now we are moving to the last of the cabinets in the main kitchen area. I am so hyped, excited, pumped, like in disbelief that I am almost truly done with this kitchen area declutter. So let's get to the last of the cabinets. I don't even know 
how old the candy in here is. So this is my candy stash hidden up here. Okay, I'm embarrassed. So in my last kitchen area declutter, I had a whole bunch of fine china from my grandma that I asked you guys what to do with it. And on this entire top row here, I completely forgot about it. But I have a whole different set of china that I've... Ugh. What? Why do I have all this china? This is what happens when you are the only girl on like a certain side of the family. Cause a lot of y'all have recommended that I see if there's any other family members who want the China, but I don't have any cousins on this side of the family. And I just have two brothers in terms of siblings and my brothers really, I mean, they're, they're brothers. They don't, they don't care about this like at all. This is everything that remained in the other cabinets of the kitchen, not including the area under the sink. I actually decided to do the area under the sink last because it's all cleaning supplies. So I feel like it's a different subcategory than this hodgepodge mess. First, y'all saw where I hide all of my candy and sweets now so that my kids don't just rummage through the pantry and get it themselves. I got all my Oreos, my little pokey sticks my peanut M&Ms, <laughs> all the delicious things that I wanna keep away from my children, but I wanna hoard for myself, I keep in that tall cabinet. This is literally just a bag full of rocks. So yeah, we'll get rid of this. I'm getting rid of the candy in here, but this is a crystal vase from my mom, so it's a definite keep. We have a ton of just random towels. My husband buys a lot of them. I feel like we have a mess or a spill in this house and then he doesn't know where all the towels are. And so then he just keeps buying towels so that we have them for when there's a spill. It's just a vicious cycle. I'm going to donate a bunch of these towels. I'm gonna keep these nice crisp white towels. More pokies, I have an obsession. My husband bought me this when I was in my third trimester with twins. When my doctor told me I was on bed rest and I couldn't really like get around or do much of anything, as a joke, my husband got me this little grabber thing. I, I honestly didn't even really use it when I was pregnant because if anything was this close to me, I mean, I, I could just get it myself. This thing doesn't, isn't that effective. But yeah, I don't need this. <laughs> We're gonna donate it. Oh. So rewind, I already talked to you about how we have a nebulizer and it was in a plastic bag and how my kids consistently get sick. So we've had multiple occasions where we've had to use a nebulizer. And this is the problem with not having an organized house is because we already owned this nebulizer, but because I didn't know where it was, we had to buy another nebulizer for another occasion that we needed it. And now we have two nebulizers and really who needs two? No one, cause we're not a hospital. This is the cute nebulizer. I'm going to keep this one. It has the nice bag with it. I'm gonna put it up in our medicine cabinet, but we'll get rid of the other nebulizer because we only need one. So happy to have a more organized life and hopefully not double purchase things in the future. Then the last thing in these cabinets that I was shocked to even come across was another set of china. This is the brand of Grace. This is the design on the front. I actually do think it's a pretty design. I like how it is very neutral. I'll be honest, I actually don't know where this china came from. Maybe it'll come to me as I'm editing this. I'll call my mom after this, see if she gave it to me. Truthfully, we could have bought this house and this was already up top there. I don't know where this came from. I'll probably sell it considering I have zero sentimental ties to it, unless it is supposed to be important and I just forgot and my mom reminds me, 
If not, I'm going to sell this. So I'm just going to box it up for now. So we actually don't have a lot to put away from this portion of the declutter. Just what is in this bin here. And then this is what I am donating or just getting rid of or giving to someone else. But let me put this away super fast and then we will finish up with the bottom cabinet. My camera ran out of battery as I was doing the declutter of this last cabinet in this entire task, of course. So the next frame, you will see that it is already completed. Quick update on where we are at before we get into all this organization stuff that y'all turned me on to, but we have a nice, organized under cabinet right now above here just has that one really large pot that we only use when we're doing large meals the cabinet above the fridge honestly nothing's in there you have to stand on one of these super tall like bar chairs to even barely reach into there so i'm just not putting anything in there for now my candy stash and extra kleenex and towels are all up here now we are to organizing and making things look as beautiful as possible. There are a lot of projects and things I want to complete here, but first let me show you how I am utilizing my new Cricut Joy to beautify and customize my home with ease. As I said earlier in this video, they are sponsoring this video, but something they didn't know is I was planning on buying a Cricut Joy on my own the same week that they ended up reaching out to me. So it was just a perfect situation for me. The reason I was going to buy the Cricut Joy before they graciously gifted it to me is because word on the street is it is your DIY best friend. So many people told me that I had to get one because you can use it on a plethora of DIY projects. So let's rewind for a second because I'm realizing right now some of you might not know what a Cricut machine is. Simply put, a Cricut machine is a cutting machine. It allows you to cut a wide variety of materials to create endless amounts of DIY projects. I got the Cricut Joy, which is the smallest Cricut machine they make. It's right up my alley and great for beginners. The Cricut Joy is the perfect companion to quickly and easily personalize anything with one cut in one color in less than 15 minutes. Another reason I like the Cricut Joy is it is small and compact. I can easily store it in a high place so my kids don't get into it. And when I want to use it, it is so quick and easy to take down and set up, which allows me to get to my projects quicker, which we all know as moms, we're super busy. If we can get things done in less than 15 minutes, that is ideal. And last note about the Cricut Joy before I start using it in some of these kitchen organization projects is the Cricut Joy is unique from other Cricut cutting machines in that it uses Cricut Smart Materials. The Smart Material lineup is just another reason why it is the perfect beginner Cricut machine. The Smart Materials are designed to work without a cutting mat, so overall there's less to buy and transport. I will have links in the description below for you to learn more, but let's move to the project. Here's the first item I'm going to be using my Cricut to cut a vinyl label for. If you watch my last declutter video, I was trying to get as much off my counters as possible, but a couple of the oil bottles were too tall to store in the cabinet, so they're still sitting out. I bought these beautiful oil bottles off Amazon that are short enough to store in my cabinets. It'll help me clear off my counters, and I'm going to create a label for them right now, and I'll show you the process of how I do that. First, I'm going into the Cricut Design Space to create a label with the font that I want. They have tons of fonts to choose from. I selected Love Affair. I want it to be cursive that is connected together so I am ungrouping the letters so that I can move them to connect. I think it looks great. And then I'm going to highlight this, weld it so that it all sticks together into one piece and shrink it down so it fits the space I want. That looks perfect for both bottles. So I am clicking the make it button and then it's going to walk me through how to do the next steps. It asks how you're loading the materials and I am using the smart vinyl. So I checked without a mat. So for this project, we need the cut to be five inches long. You select the material it is cutting, and then it has you load the material into the Cricut Joy, and we'll start cutting once you authorize it. Once it is done cutting, remove and weed out the extra vinyl that you don't want pressed onto your item. Once it's just the letters you want, take a piece of transfer tape and scrape over the label. This will lift it off in one piece so that you can then transfer it to your item. Scrape it onto your bottle, remove and admire. So now we have the avocado oil and the olive oil in those beautiful bottles, which ultimately frees up 
more counter space. I had this wire basket here, but what remains in the wire basket really should go to other parts of the house. Like I don't, I don't need sunscreen or lotion in the kitchen. All of this can find a new home and we just have more counter space now. Next, I wanted to make some labels for these items that go into my medicine cabinet. I had a lot of first aid items and it was like I was knocking things over to try to figure out where certain first aid items were. So I thought it would be easier to put them all just in a little clear shoe bin and just label this entire bin as first aid. So if I ever need first aid items for my three boys, I can just pull out this whole bin and have everything I need. And then I also got these containers from the Dollar Tree. They were obviously $1 each. So I'm gonna label these two for now with the time I have left, allergy and bandages, and that is what these bins are going to house. I ended up having time to label a whole bunch of these bins. I used the metallic matte smart vinyl on black because I thought it looked really nice against the white. You apply it the same way I just showed you on the oil bottles. So we can just cut to how beautiful and organized my medicine cabinet is now. Finally, I have everything labeled and organized. Overflow at the top, but it's so easy having all the kids stuff right here the bandages and first aid kit there, adult pain relievers and allergy things, and then our vitamins. Next, I wanted to get this knife block off my counter. We have a hodgepodge of knives that makes the block look really cluttered when it's out. I bought this magnetic strip for the wall, but chickened out in the end because I am positive if I tried to drill through the tile on the wall, I would crack it. Fortunately, y'all always have the best ideas. A lot of you recommended an in-drawer knife block and then child locking the drawer. So that is what I bought and I'm moving forward with now. So now this little pullout drawer right next to the oven, it has the fire extinguisher, all of our liners and wrappers, all the knives are in here. I'm going to put a child lock on here just as an extra safety precaution, but hopefully I'm thinking out of sight, out of mind is a lot of what y'all said who recommended the in-drawer knife holder. And then you guys, look at all this counter space. This used to have a knife block, two huge baskets, and then this. So it was like all the way pushed over there. Next organization tip I pulled from the comments is getting a tea bag organizer. I had a ton of tea taking up space in my coffee and tea bar cabinet. It was stacked and just an inefficient use of space. Many of you noticed and recommended this and I love how it looks and keeps all the tea bags separate but together. Then I came across this tiny vase as I was decluttering and thought it would be a perfect and more aesthetically pleasing container for my stevia packets. So I'm transferring those here and bonus, it takes up less space. That was such a long project, but I am finally done. I am so, 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 so happy. I know y'all comment below any other organization hacks you can think of. I'm gonna keep collecting different things I can do and I'm gonna keep organizing, optimizing, improving my kitchen as much as I can until I feel like it is absolutely perfect, but at least in terms of declutter, I feel like I have exactly what I need and want in my kitchen now and I am so happy about that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my other decluttering videos that should be floating over the screen at this point. I have an entire playlist set up and there's more to come. So subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye.